Welcome back to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. Let's take a couple of seconds to connect and settle in. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it for a few seconds and imagine all these wonderful molecules of energy just moving through your lungs and out into your bloodstream and your body and then exhale. Any tension with that, any, any obstructions, and then take another deep breath in. Hold it. Feel your neck and your shoulders. Feel your jaw. Feel your back. And exhale any tension. And let's press our palms gently together. Rub, them, think, you rub your fingers softly against your palms. Feel your fingertips, feel your palms, and bring yourself present to being in your body right here, right now. So today, I thought it would be awesome to talk about inspiration. We've been talking about inspiration and connecting to our inner voice and uh, having that be the pure expression of our soul out in the world and and uh, in our awareness. And uh, some years ago, prior to the start of my channeled writing, good morning, everybody. Hi, Gabby Forrester, welcome. Um, and hi, Dido, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, uh, what we're talking about today is inspiration. And, and uh, back in 2009, I took a, a workshop in accessing divine wisdom it was accessing divine wisdom writing workshop and it started me on doing channeled writing and i found my notes from this this course that i took this workshop and i thought i'd share them because it was it was really really cool and I want to encourage you to try it out for yourself because it's a really neat thing to check out. And uh, welcome, Sue. Thank you so much for being here. So uh, what I'm going to do is, is just read this. It's the first, or it is the spark that resulted in all this channeled writing that is now getting compiled, transcribed, and that uh, we're going to publish, I believe we're going to publish it through Enlightened World Network, which is pretty exciting. So here goes. Uh, the workshop was, it was called Accessing Divine Wisdom Writing Workshop. And I asked for, I, I guess what we were meant to do is to ask questions. And that's really the way that I moved forward with the channeled writing is I would start with a question and I would just listen and write what comes. So the first question that I asked, it's not so much a how to because the how to is just tuning in. It's what came out of it. But one piece of advice or connection from God, that's what I asked for. And here's what came out. Let go. Let go of the limitations imposed by belief and conviction in what is right and what is real. Let go of what you think you know. Let go of the you that knows it. See nothing more than what's there to be seen without the overlay and filters of your history and circumstance. Breathe new and, oh, I'm sorry, breathe new air, new breaths, new life from moment to moment. And how am I to do that? The I that you are cannot do that. Lose the I and start to see. You don't really mean to lose the I because it was E-Y-E. Uh, no, metaphorically, lose the interpretation that happens when the eyes meet the interpretive mechanism that is the brain 
that links you in the physical experience and history of your body as a function of time and space. But if you see beyond seeing, see beyond the appearance, look for the light rather than the substance, look for the movement rather than what's static, then you will begin to see. Then the world will present itself as new with every moment. Then will things, circumstances, interactions, connections become clear. And uh, that was the passage. I'm going to check the messages now, see who's here. Ivana Gertzman, welcome. So glad to have you. New breath from Sammamish, Washington. Wonderful. Glad to have you here from Sammamish. And Gabby Forrester from Western Australia. Wow. This is an international gathering today. What a treat. That's awesome. So that that passage is timeless information and it ties in so much with the uh, conversations that I've been having with you about identity and perception. And I, I believe that in this moment, we really get to look more deeply at what's real and what we project into the world and how that impacts our experience. But I'm going to go a little further with this because the second one was to take a specific issue you want advice on. So this is a how-to part and ask, what is the secret? Is it okay for me to know yet? And so that's what I asked. Um, the secret is the unveiling. The fear prohibits access. So um, just to reiterate, the advice was for this course, take a specific issue you want advice on and ask. And what I asked was, what is the secret? Is it okay for me to know yet? And uh, the secret is the unveiling. The fear prohibits access. So then I asked, fear of what? Fear of pain, of old hurt, of being swept away. And I want to talk about that because in the face of expanding ourselves, one of the things I'm noticing as very present for my coaching clients is a fear of letting go of the known, letting go of their, their experience of themselves that's so familiar and not knowing what will be on the other side of that. And, and I, I have encountered this again and again and again with people who are on a path of awakening. And I've experienced myself, it, it myself where there was the, a terror at letting go of the me I know myself to be. Ivana says, what is the secret? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I bet there are many. And if we ask them as a prompt for our writing, who knows what will come up? It's very interesting stuff. So then the question came, am I safe now? Is that what needs to be the case, that I need to feel protected before I can pierce the veil? And what we want to recognize is that safety is a construct. Danger is a construct. And in this particular time of our history as humans on the planet, we're very, very much confronted with this notion of safety and the notion of fear uh, of, of danger. And it's so easy to get caught into a a cascade of thoughts and feelings that amplify the fear and the and the perceived danger and what we need to recognize is the truth of safety resides within us within us so that's 
what we need to cultivate is our sense of connection to something greater than ourselves, to uh, cultivating a trust in the perfection of things, to allow ourselves to work from the assumption that everything is exactly perfect, to, f to fulfill what I came here to fulfill, that I create this, that it all serves me. And if we operate from that vantage point, then we can have a much greater experience of freedom. I'm going to check the uh, comments here. Are we ever safe? What does that actually mean? Am I going to die if I'm not safe in my own perception? Well, Ivana, we're all going to die. <laughs> you know, the sooner we recognize that we're all going to die, then we get to start deciding how we're willing to live. You know, uh, we're not going to outrun death. We can protect ourselves as much as we want. And we're still going to end up dying at some point or another. So uh, I think it's really, really important not to be foolish, not to be uh, necessarily uh, flaunting uh, lack of lack of awareness in any way. But what we need to be evaluating is, what is the quality of our lives and what are we willing to sacrifice for safety? There was another conversation one of these mornings that I believe it was titled, What Price Safety? So, um, and Mucker and Wife, hi from Canada. Great to see you here. It, this really truly is international today. That's really exciting. So anyway, the question is, do I need to feel safe in order to allow myself to let go of whatever it is that's holding me from the experience of piercing the veil, like for awakening? Because that's been that's been my focus, my mission, my inspiration for most of my life is to is to achieve a state of an awakened enlightenment. So uh, the answer to that was you were always safe. Safety is in the remember is in the remembering, remembering of your essential self. And then I asked, what will it take to know this in my bones? in my being to be able to take the next step. And here's the answer that came up. Connect to me, dig your toes into the earth, breathe. Somehow it seems that the only way to get to the secret is to let go of all judgment. What you were saying about the vision to let go of right and wrong, this is me talking. And somehow the thought of that brings up tears. So I want to talk about that too. But I see that Ivana says, I've been living in faith rather than fear. I had to shed fear in order to trust and believe. And I think that that's really true. When we talk about how to how to overcome the fear and the conversation of uh, of frenzy that that is in our current environment the, cultivating the faith that it's perfect as it is that uh, I or spirit has generated this in in perfection for fulfillment of what I came here to do and for my experience, then it gives you a richer sense of safety and trust. And we're here for experience, for sure. And, and I believe for expanding co co the collective consciousness, as well as our own. And when we operate from the question, what's available? What are the opportunities? What's opening? Those questions engender expansion and uh, 
greater greater optimism versus questions like how could I protect myself because what's that doing it's amplifying fear and what we put our attention on is what's going to magnify so I want to talk about the fact that this letting go of right and wrong letting go of fear and protection or danger and safety letting go of these ideas when I was confronting them really brought tears up for me and the tears were I believe related to the not knowing of what's on the other side of letting go of all our judgments that we believe to be true what happens when we allow ourselves to shed our our opinions and our distinctions and our beliefs the the fear is that we won't know who we are or we won't know how to operate in the world or the fear is that we will disappear and it's interesting because this has come up in sessions with my clients lately like a terror at letting go of the self that we know ourselves to be because we don't know what's going to be on the other side of that and the interesting thing is i i do this process that i've developed called the called core connection and it it elicits from the people that i work from their other than conscious symbolism that unlocks the keys to all these things with people so in working with one client who had this terror around around letting go and and also a deep deep desire for that in the beginning of the session they were terrorized in the end of the session it was like oh <laughs> you know it was like no big deal relaxing no problem here i am no fear and allowing these parts these things uh aspects of ourselves that we've identified with allowing them to just sort of fall away with grace and in the process of letting them fall away with grace what happens is that we have a greater expansion and a greater ability to express the true self that's really there it's such an irony but i i have experienced it myself this terror of oh my gosh this is going to be monumental and and i guess coming from the uh expectation that the transformation itself is going to be traumatic when in fact it it is it's really graceful and easy as we just allow the grip to relax and i mean just the experience of the grip versus the open hand is such a profound difference and a wonderful wonderful metaphor for what the opening is to our greater selves so i'm just going to check over here to see or somehow someone uh let's see ivana says also the fear that we won't matter anymore and i agree that that's probably one of the fears that will be irrelevant will disappear but i think i think what does happen is that most things don't matter anymore like what matters matters and so much of what we believe matters doesn't and the importance of that falls away uh through this process of of opening and expanding so um i'm gonna just read a little bit further so oh wow okay the um the, the i'm actually not going to read further because it's not really talking about the expansion um what it is talking about is is the the experience that i had maybe i will i will read it just 
so that if you experience something like this, you'll know that you're not the only one. Um, okay, so, and somehow the thought of letting go of right and wrong brought up tears. Is there a way to allow without that judgment, without the reactivity? I know how to do this, but I can't do it alone. And you've not been there. This is me talking to what I was experiencing as my higher guidance. And you've not been there when I needed you. You've left me alone and abandoned. And the tears are climbing up my throat again, making way to my eyes, and I'm sweating now. It feels so close, nearer the surface. And that's the end of the writing. But I survived it. <laughs> and <laughs> you will too. And um, I, I encourage you to engage in conversation with your other than conscious self or your greater self or with God or with source or whatever your language is to access this greater intelligence, this greater consciousness that can provide us with guidance and direction, whether it's our other than conscious speaking to our conscious being or God or angels or our highest self or spirit, whatever it is, I encourage you to experiment with it. And you might be really surprised at what comes out. And even if you don't want to engage in a dialogue with a, uh, a higher consciousness, journaling is a really powerful way to gain perspective. And asking good questions generates typically good answers. So if you're feeling uh, like I was at that time, I was feeling somewhat lost and abandoned uh, and isolated. If those are your experiences at this time, please try, try journaling and ask questions of a higher source and see what comes up. You might find the, the comfort and solace that you're looking for and that you hadn't even imagined was possible. Devana, you're so welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I was trying to talk and read at the same time. Yvonne, I really appreciate you joining us and, and your engagement. And you say thank you for this beautiful sharing. It's my pleasure. I hope that it serves. I hope that you you go, if you haven't been uh, having a dialogue with a higher awareness, whatever that might be, I invite you to try it and see how that is for you. And, and uh, please share it forward. So that's it for today. I have a couple announcements though. And uh, it is Thursday. I think it's the 7th. What, what is it? Thursday, May 7th. And uh, this evening at 5 p.m. Eastern, I'm very excited to share our second live broadcast on Enlightened World Network. Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Eastern of the Broader Edge. And uh, that is conversations that envision a, a new future. And it's going to be really wonderful uh, with myself and three other extraordinary women, Terry Angel, Sheila Cash, and Elizabeth Williams. And it's going to be a dynamic conversation. Today's topic is finding your tribe. And so we were just talking about the feelings of isolation and, and abandonment and, and also this quest to find a greater uh, awareness. And I think that all of that's going to be coming up in the conversation this evening. We'd love you to join us. And we'd love you to be engaged with us, too, because we're going to be streaming live on Facebook and YouTube and Periscope. And we have the ability to be responding to all of your comments and, and involve you in our conversation, which is going to, I'm sure it'll be provocative and, 
and inspiring. So I hope you'll join us for that. And another announcement is that I have a podcast called Sustainability Now. Our website is sustainabilitynow.global. And we have a Facebook page that is um, Sustainability Now. And there's also a public Facebook group called uh, Sustainability Now Summit. And we, on Thursday nights, have a movie hangout for uh, people to, from all over the world. Again, it's a global audience to come together, watch a movie, and have meaningful conversation afterwards, and also just really connect with people that are very focused on and committed to stewardship of the planet and each other, you know, moving into sustainable directions. So tonight's movie is Food Inc. And it talks about the industrial food machine and uh, how our food system is currently run. And I, it's really eye-opening and important information, especially in these times when we're starting to see a disruption of the food supply as a result of COVID. And we get to be more aware of how our food is produced and uh, what the consequences of that, that production structure what the consequences are on our health, on uh, the welfare of these animals that are being produced, of, of the welfare of the planet. And I invite you to come and join us for that. So that the way that you're gonna be able to access that is by personally messaging from uh, Sustainability Now, you can message me, Mira Rubin, or message Scott Billy, spelled S-C-O-T-T. -T. His last name is spelled B-I-L-L-E, not I-E. And um, we can provide you with the link. We made the mistake one week of publishing the link on social media, and we got Zoom bombed. Uh, so now we're we're doing it a little bit more discreetly. And you can also sign up for our email list through our website, and that will give you notifications of our Hangouts. But they're every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I invite you to join us, and not only for the movie, but join us in taking action to to ensure a strong direction going forward, particularly out of COVID, that is conscious of how we engage with our food, our planet, and each other. So that wraps up for today. I thank you so much for being with me here. Deep love, great compassion for you, and I hope you'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>